what up guys welcome to game over entertainment today we're talking about life is strange episode five and mr jefferson's character okay all right people so we got a very interesting development from him to say at least at the end of episode four when we find out that he is actually the person responsible uh our main antagonist has been revealed and he has to be stopped he's not above kidnapping drugging even murdering these women in order to pursue his artistic vision as twisted as it is man so this is not your normal criminal man a normal criminal who goes after money power maybe respect maybe revenge in some sort of way and that makes him even more dangerous and even more crazy one of the most things i'm actually interested in here in episode five is his exposition about why he's doing this what's going on inside this man's mind because we're going to find out how insane he really is when he actually starts talking about his reasons in episode 5. But hopefully hopefully they, they get into that a little bit, man. I don't want to just take him out or just escape without hearing what the hell is going on. Because I'm still questioning myself, like, why? Because I'm pretty, I was pretty caught off guard by this. Now, um, a lot of things from previous episodes actually come together and start to make sense now that we know that Mr. Jefferson is the culprit. So let me go ahead and take you back right here. Mr. Jefferson actually first started teaching uh, at Blackwell Academy in 2013. Right now, at the current state of time, it is uh, October 12, 2013. Probably started his uh, tenure in the uh, spring 2013 semester. And then three months later, April 23, 2013, is when Rachel Amber went missing. But we already know that uh, Mr. Jefferson had a hand in that situation. So that's plenty enough time to make that underground bunker, get any supplies he needed, maybe camera equipment moved in there. In episode one, Mr. Jefferson talks about another artist, about how it's very easy to trap somebody into a dark corner and picture them into a vulnerable state. Now we all know that he is not just talking out of his ass. He, this is actually one of his hobbies he does. And then in episode two, when we got the Kate Marsh conversation talking to Mr. Jefferson before she gets on top of the roof, Mr. Jefferson basically shuts her down, make, making Kate think that it's all her fault, that she needs to make better choices in her life. So we understand why he actually did this. You know, Kate Marsh actually looking up to Mr. Jefferson, probably one of her favorite teachers as well, an inspiration to her, shutting her down, made her believe that if this man right here, who I uh, look up to, doesn't trust me or uh, believe what I'm saying, then no one will. So probably her desperation led her to the rooftop. So he was responsible for that in a way. And uh, he knew exactly what he was doing there. Basically pushed all the blame on Kate and kind of focuses away from Nathan and subsequently himself. In episode three, we also get a conversation where Victoria is talking to Mr. Jefferson about the everyday hero uh, contest. And in the conversation, Victoria actually pretends that her and Kate are friends. So that may have been an indication or may have actually ended with Victoria on uh, Miss Jefferson's radar. The fact that she's friends with Kate. So in order to maybe even cover his tracks even more, he may have felt the need to take her out or maybe the fact that she threatened him is one of the other reasons why she may have ended up on his list because we all know Victoria was next to end up in the dark room. And Victoria, she is uh, very confident and sure of herself and what better subject to have in his portfolio than someone to turn someone who is that, who has that type of attitude, mentality, just over to the opposite side. Ultimate fear, ultimate despair, and very vulnerable. Looks like all of his victims actually really admire this man. First, we had uh, Rachel Amber, which was rumored that they actually hooked up at one point in time. So there must be some kind of hint that they had some type of attraction toward each other, either Rachel Amber toward him or the opposite way. Uh, Kate Marsh, that was one of her teachers, of course. Um, then we got Chloe. She was up in there too. She also commented on how attractive Mr. Jefferson was and how she was hot for the teacher. And now we got Max in there, who we already know looks up to Mr. Jefferson. So that's a pattern in uh, the victims we've seen so far. And they all have some type of attraction to them. So yes, yeah, some of the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. And now let's go ahead and talk about some of these theories I've been getting in my comment section. So one of the popular theories I've seen so far, um, Mr. Jefferson is Sean Prescott, but I don't believe it to be true just because the fact that Mr. Jefferson is widely known, he's very famous. He's only been teaching at the school since 2013. So 
he hasn't actually been in Arcadia Bay for a long time. Originally from Arcadia Bay, he may have some history with the Prescott that predates whatever happens in this game. So that's how you may have the uh, the clout, uh, the means to get into the barn and have access to uh, the facilities. John Prescott is a widely known person in the town of Arcadia Bay. He owns a lot of the stuff around there. The Prescott's rule. And that's kind of true in the, in the sense of fashion. So it just it doesn't make sense with the backstory we know about these two characters and just how big they are and what they represent to uh, one to the art community and one to Arcadia Bay. Another theory out there is that um, Nathan Prescott is dead and that um, Mr. Jefferson killed him. Just due to the fact that, well, some people are looking at the picture that uh, Nathan took with uh, Rachel Amber right here with him laid out, passed out. So I think that was done some time ago. It doesn't make just much sense for them to keep her around that long. So to say that this photo is recent is unlikely. But this picture is also seen as foreshadowing. Like, hold on, he looked like he did here, so maybe he's actually dead in real life. Maybe it's possible, but I don't see any reason why Mr. Jefferson would do this to Nathan. Nathan is actually helping him out. He brings them the girls. Okay, even if it is against his own will or he is being blackmailed or whatever, he's a victim. He's still bringing him everything he needs. He's throwing these parties. So why would he kill his main assistant? Unless they got into some big argument behind the scenes that we don't know about. Perhaps Nathan wasn't too thrilled about having Victoria Chase next on the list. I don't know. And some people are also mentioning how uh, Mr. Jefferson had Nathan's phone at the end. If Nathan and uh, Mr. Jefferson are allies, then, you know, Mr. Jefferson could simply have borrowed his phone, let him know, like, hey, I'm about to get these girls off our back. I got the perfect trap for them. Knowing that he wouldn't be implemented if, and they would believe this text from Nathan's Prescott's phone. Or he could be like, hey, Nathan, go ahead and text this out to Chloe and Max right now. I'm about to meet them at the junkyard, okay? You know, just something interesting like that. So it doesn't have to be that Mr. Jefferson has killed Nathan for his phone. Up to this point, we know that they've been working together. We do know that they have some kind of arrangement going on right now. So I don't see any reason why that would have changed. We still got too many unanswered questions from Nathan that need to be revealed. And I don't think they should just kill him off right now, okay? Some people are questioning whether he is a victim or if he is still an antagonist. So another interesting question I got in my comments, um, how did Mr. Jefferson actually make it to the junkyard before Max and Chloe? So if you guys remember the last time we saw Mr. Jefferson in episode four and prior to the ending, he was giving the award to the Everyday Hero Contest to Victoria. And somehow he used Nathan's phone to text Max and Chloe and drive his car probably at blazing speeds in order to get to the junkyard and spring the trap, trap on them before they arrive. Um, so this has led to some other theories out there about how um, Mr. Jefferson actually knows about Max's abilities. Um, it is kind of possible. I can't see him actually fully understanding how the rewind powers work. And some people have actually suggested that Mr. Jefferson has the rewind powers himself, which I just don't want to believe. He would be OP as hell. He'd be really hard to stop. I don't even know how Max would fight against someone like that because if Mr. Jefferson has the power, he probably has a better understanding of it. He probably knows how to use it more. Um, yeah, he'd just be too powerful, man. Too, too hard to stop in episode 5. But it definitely would be one hell of a twist. So, to answer your question about how Mr. Jefferson actually intercepted Chloe and them in the junkyard, well, there is a back door to the pool, if you guys remember. Max and Chloe were in the pool scene, and a security card came in in the door opposite of the pool. That's actually an exit and an entrance to the pool, okay? So Mr. Jefferson could have exited that way, parking lot maybe right there, got in his car, made the text, and then drove to the junkyard in order to prepare for them. Already having the anesthetic injectable drug in his car and his gun there, so it wasn't pretty hard to put together, but that's the way he could have stopped them and got there before that, okay? All right, so Mark Jefferson, a man willing to kidnap, drug, and kill in order to pursue his twisted artistic vision of photography. This is probably the main reason why he even returned to Arcadia Bay. No, he's not a good guy who wants to help the students out. Bullshit. Okay, he came there just for his own plan. And there he has connections with people in order to get set up, in order to be protected, in order to remove all doubts of his situation. 
That's why he moved to Arcadia Bay. Okay, this is probably a dream for him. And uh, it's all going to end on episode five. Okay, we got to put a stop to this man. I don't care what his reason is, but let me know in the comments what you guys think about Mr. Jefferson. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just very interested to see what he has to say in episode five, man. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Comment below and peace out. All of you represent Blackwell Academy and everything our school stands for. As far as I'm concerned, you're all everyday heroes. The envelope, please. And the winner is... Come on! Oh my, what a shocker.